guys, my name is Gomal and I am a rising third year medical student. Today I actually wanted to make a video talking a little bit more about my step experience, how I structured my studying, and how I was able to get the score that I wanted. I won't be revealing my exact score, but I will say the CBSE, I believe, is the very first practice exam that we take with the school for step one. I was able to pass that first exam and scored 50 points above that on the actual thing. I would say the biggest purpose of me making this video is to hopefully show you that if I can do it, then you absolutely can too. I'm going to talk through every single resource that I use, how I use that resource, and then obviously give you some overall tips about how you should be structuring your studying. So one of the important things I would say is try and start early if you can. I actually started studying for STEP properly probably mid to late November. Dedicated started in January for me. I ended up taking the actual exam on March 8th. You don't have to put in like many, many hours. For example, even if one Sunday you can sit down and you can read through an organ system in first aid or throughout that week, maybe you can double speed through pathoma videos from MSK or GI or cardio, either while you're driving or even when you're eating breakfast or in the shower. You don't really need to sit and watch those videos very intensely again because obviously if you've already studied that organ system, you've already taken that exam, and you've already been through the material, this is just like a quick refresher so that when Dedicated actually starts, you are reviewing the material for maybe like a third time instead of a second time and it'll really help you solidify it and be able to apply it in your practice questions. Another very useful thing for me was actually making like a day-by-day -day plan for Dedicated. I basically like created this Excel sheet and then every single day I wrote down exactly what I wanted to do. This way I was able to make sure that I got through all of the material that I wanted to get through and then also was able to really like make use of all of the resources that I actually wanted to use. That's very important. You don't need to stick to this exact schedule throughout Dedicated. It's totally okay to modify your schedule as you move along, but you do want to have a schedule so that you have a starting point. Another thing is, of course, practice questions. So practice questions are very, very important. It's important to be doing them consistently through Dedicated. I know it can be kind of hard and draining to feel like you know, you're doing 40 to 80 practice questions from your world every single day. But what I would personally do is I would wake up in the morning. The first thing I would do is just like two your world blocks so I could just get them out of the way. That's kind of also like stimulating test day because test day is just gonna be practice questions in the morning. So that I found really helpful. And then last but not least is you wanna take breaks and you want to also plan those and fit those into your schedule. I would have break days the day after practice tests and those break days were kind of planned in a way so that you know every week I could have a day to just catch up on whatever I needed to catch up on. I could maybe sleep in if I needed to. Those are probably the most important overall tips that I have for you. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about each individual resource and how I used it. So I'm actually going to start by talking to you guys about first aid. First aid was a phenomenal resource for me throughout the course of year one and year two, but also through Dedicated. I actually read that book cover to cover during Dedicated itself. I know that sounds like a lot, but again, if you make a plan and you break it down into like 12 to 15 pages a day. If you have, you know, a two month dedicated or two and a half month dedicated like we did, you will be able to get through all of that material. That was very helpful for me because especially for the concepts that I knew that I needed to work on or were weaker for me, I had the opportunity to like read through first aid and then find those concepts online in videos to get better explanations and really solidify those concepts. Reading first aid also kind of gave me the confidence that I needed to be able to say that yes, I covered all of the material and yes, I feel like comfortable to take the exam now. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about UWorld. I would say UWorld is equally as important as first aid, especially because on the actual exam, you're not gonna be asked to regurgitate any information from first aid. You're actually going to have to interpret the question stem, try and understand what's going on and then make your best guess. Using UWorld not only helps you to learn the content and cover the content, but it also teaches you how to become a good test taker and learn POE, process of elimination. Of course, UWorld also has those random questions that you're like, how would I even ever know that? But your step exam is also going to have those questions, especially for those questions I would say, 
it's really important to be able to use PLE. The way that I actually used UWorld is I would wake up in the morning probably around 7.30 or 8 and I would aim to start UWorld by 8.30 if I could. The goal was to kind of sit through two blocks back to back. That way in the mornings I was stimulating test day. The first thing that I did in the morning was those two blocks. After I finished them, I would go through my incorrects and I would actually split screen my laptop. So on the left I had UWorld, on the right I had like an empty Google document. And for everything I got incorrect, I would kind of try and write like a one-liner or a two-liner about why I got it correct or maybe like details about that concept that I missed that could help me refresh that concept a little bit. And I actually would print that Google Doc out like every week or every two weeks and try and read that Google document. So that's kind of how I structured my review for UWorld. Another important thing is if you have the opportunity, it can be really useful to also make sure you're going through the explanations for every individual individual answer choice because a lot of times we focus on okay like why did we get C wrong and why was B the right answer but you also want to look at A and D because those might be the right answers for different questions with different question stems going forward especially in you world really dissect those questions try and figure out why you get them wrong and that'll help not only like your percentage in terms of your blocks but you'll also just feel like you're covering more material. Now, the only exception that I had to this, you know, taking two blocks in the morning was if I was reading through first aid and going through an organ system that I was really weak on. I noticed that I had the most energy as soon as I woke up in the morning and then it kind of slowly declined throughout the day, especially for those organ systems like renal, I would actually wake up and read first aid first and go through pathoma first. That way, I felt like I was really covering that organ system properly. I was getting through all of the material that I needed to get through. And then I would start UWorld and do those two blocks. The biggest way that I was able to progress my score was not through the Google document for UWorld, but it was actually through doing my incorrects. This is the one thing I kind of wish I went back and spent more time on. At first, I wasn't gonna do my incorrects. I thought it was really sufficient for me to go through UWorld the way I was going through it. But the last week before my exam, I kind of realized that there were still some gaps that I was worried about. And I figured that maybe UWorld could help me cover them. So what I actually did is there's a way for you on UWorld to rank your organ systems from your best to your worst. <laughs> so I did that, I ranked them, and then I started from my worst and then I just kind of moved up and got through as much as I could. So I did incorrects for renal, I did them for palm, I did them for endocrine. Those are some of my weaker units. Going through those incorrects and redoing them really, really helped me realize what I was getting wrong because I very quickly saw patterns in the questions I was getting wrong. Like I was getting the same concept wrong again and again and again, especially for the weaker organ systems. And so I actually spent a lot of time reviewing that concept and going through it the week before the exam. And I think that's why I had like a 16 point jump in terms of my actual score on step versus what I had scored like the week prior. The biggest way for you to actually improve is I would say the last two weeks try and get through as many incorrects as you can. I know it's easier said than done because it feels like sometimes there's so many materials and so many resources, but if you can pick a handful of resources, like a couple of them, and just use them very, very well, you don't need to spread yourself thin in terms of like the number of resources you're using. I think that First Aid U World and Pathoma were great, and then Sketchy was kind of like an add-on, and I used Anki to like review my Sketchy. Moving forward, I'll quickly go over Pathoma. Pathoma, I think, was amazing through the school year, and I also think it was really helpful for STEP personally. The way that I used Pathoma is because I'd already been through it through the school year and I had like covered it a couple of times, I didn't read Pathoma, but I would watch it. And I would try and watch it like as quickly as I kind of could because UWorld and First Aid took up a lot of my day. So I would try and fit it in when I was like eating breakfast, in the shower, or if I was driving anywhere, and I would try and play Pathoma at double speed. I got through the first three or four chapters, probably three times over the course of dedicated and the rest of them I got through once except for units that again I was weaker on I would try and watch those videos two or three times just to make sure I was like getting that information for example the nephritic nephritic syndromes are just like really tough for me for some reason so I watch those videos multiple times so pathoma is a great resource but don't stress too much about watching it really intensely 
because you've already covered that material and you've already been through it. Okay, so now I'll quickly talk about Sketchy. I really liked Sketchy Micro. Personally, wasn't a huge fan of Sketchy Form. I think Sketchy Micro does a really good job encompassing all of the important points about every single microbe that they talk about. The farm videos for me felt a little bit longer and I think sometimes there was just so much going on that I couldn't really fully process it in my head. In terms of farm videos, I would say their best ones are probably the cardio drugs, so like the anti-arithmetics and then also I really liked their antibiotics. I think those are really good as well. The way that I studied Sketchy is, so I actually watched every single micro video. I watched it at double speed. I would try and do this during lunch or in the evening when I was really tired and like didn't really have energy to do anything else. I would sometimes just watch Sketchy in bed and that kind of felt like a review. In order to continue reviewing those Sketchy videos, I would use Anki. So there's like a Sketchy pepper deck and I would just do that deck every single day. If I had time, um, not too many cards, like 50 cards or something like that but I would go through those cards just as like a review of the images for farm itself I felt like reading first aid farm wasn't too helpful like I would still skim the farm section but there's actually like a first aid farm deck that I used and it only has drugs from every single section or organ system in first aid and it breaks it down that way. So I'd actually just try to do that as often as I could to continue reviewing through farm. I think farm is probably one of those areas that for me was weaker in general when I was going into the exam. So I was kind of just trying to go through it in the best way that I could and the Anki deck ended up being the way I mostly studied for farm. So I'm actually gonna wrap up by talking about practice exams. I took seven practice exams I took U World 1, U World 2, and then I took 18, 21, 22, 23, 24. Those were the ones that I was able to kind of fit into my schedule. And again, I tried to have a break day the day after my practice exam. I would try and review it the same day. And if I couldn't get through it all the same day, I would kind of review it into the following day. Personally, I felt like the practice tests weren't super representative of what my exam actually looked like. UWorld felt a lot more representative of the actual exam. And actually the UWorld 1 and UWorld 2 practice step exams were also very accurate in terms of the style of questions. The NVMEs for me personally were just very discouraging. I always felt like I wasn't able to perform where I wanted. Don't get discouraged with those. Just kind of use them as practice and know that they're not really representative of the way the actual exam even like looks like. It's really easy to kind of get down on yourself at a time like this when you're already super stressed, but this is just a reminder that please don't worry about that. I was worried about that and I'm really glad that um, the actual exam was nothing like those. So hopefully that makes you feel better and gives you a little bit of reassurance. That's probably it in terms of the way that I used resources. Again, I want to emphasize that I used First Aid, UWorld, Pathoma, Sketchy, and then Anki just to cover the Sketchy videos and re-visualize those images. The way that I saw the biggest jump for me personally was when I did my incorrects the week before my actual exam and I identified the areas that I was weak on and getting things wrong. If you keep going, if you keep putting in the work, if you really focus on the areas that you're weak on, you can absolutely get that jump that you want and score the way that you want as well. Thank you for watching. If this video is helpful for you, I'd really appreciate it if you could share, subscribe, like, comment, any of those things. If you have any other questions that I didn't answer in the video, please leave them in the comments and I will definitely answer those there. And yeah, 